Welcome to the second video on the Behringer Wing. I am Drew Brashler. I'm with DBB Audio, and I have a blog at dbbaudio.com dedicated to all the Behringer products. You can find tips and tricks on the X Air, the X32, and the Wing. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'm always posting new videos on any of the Behringer products and tips and tricks on RF and other things related to production. So let's go ahead and dive into the connections on the Behringer wing. Now this console is 48 mono, stereo, or mid-side channels. So the channels themselves can either be mono, stereo, or mid-side. And it depends on the type of source that you select. And those sources are found in the routing section of the board, and that's gonna be a different video. However, I wanted to go over all the input and output connections on the Behringer wing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back side of the board and let's dive in. Now, when we think of all of the available types of connections on the Behringer wing, we actually have upwards of 400 sources that we can do on the new Behringer wing. So let's go ahead and talk about inputs first. On the right-hand side, we actually have eight Midas Pro Series inputs. Now, this is an XLR input, and it is a combo jack, so it's either XLR or quarter-inch TRS or TS. Now, one thing to note about these is they are not a high impedance input, so for a guitar or a bass or something like that, if you were to connect it directly into this, you would want to use a direct box first. The next thing is over on the left-hand side is we have eight auxiliary inputs that are line level. So these are TRS or TS, depending on if you want balanced or unbalanced, and these are line level. So the, again, these are not going to be for your guitar inputs. Down here we have our digital audio, AES EBU input. This is a stereo over one uh, XLR on a digital protocol, and it's, uh, it's very good for getting audio in and out of your console. The next thing that's actually pretty exciting is this stage connect. Now this allows you to do 32 channels over low latency over one XLR input. Now we're going to see Behringer come out with a lot of new input options using this stage connect, so I'm very excited about that. Next, we have the AES-50 Super Mac ports, and we actually have three of these. Now, this does need to be a shielded or STP type of cable, and it's a good idea to have the Ethercon barrel on the actual cable itself just for robustness, but it does need to have the shielded RJ45 connection on the actual termination. Now, the AES-50 Super Mac, as what it's called, can handle 48 channels input and output on each cable. So we can have up to 144 sources just from these three Super Mac connections. Over here on the left-hand side, we can see the control audio network. We have a USB 2.0 right here, and that is going to be for connecting our console into a favorite DAW that you have on your computer. This is USB 2.0, and it can handle 48 channels over the single USB 2.0 cable to your favorite DAW, such as Reaper or Pro Tools or Logic. Additionally, we have some network ports on the left-hand side for our control of the console using the Behringer tablet apps, such as the Copilot app. If we move over to the right-hand side of this, we also see our dual-channel recording playback card. This is where the expansion card is on the Behringer wing, and this is, again, two SD card slots, each of them handling 32 channels on their own, I-O, input and output, and you can actually combine the two slots to record or playback 64 channels at a time. One thing to note is there is no longer a talkback microphone input, so you will have to use a different input in all of your I.O. to do so. On the output side, we have eight XLR outputs, which are again the Midas Pro Series output, followed by eight TRS outputs for line level, either TRS for balanced or TS for unbalanced. There is no RCA output like there was on the X32. Additionally, for outputs, we have our three Super Mac AES-50 ports, as well as our AES-EBU port on the back of the console. 
Located on both the left and right side of the console, we have our headphone port for using for some headphones to get on your monitor section for soloing an input. These are controlled via the phones knob on the top of the surface. Moving over to the left hand side of the board, we have our four pin 12 volt lamp output followed by GPIO, which is a brand new feature on the Behringer Wing. And this stands for General Purpose Input Output, which actually allows us to control uh, the console via foot switches or even turn on certain things with a relay. So the big joke about this is you could end up controlling your coffee machine uh, by turning it on on the last portion of your show. We also have our MIDI input and output, which can control different MIDI devices or even control lighting or different things in the production space. One thing to note about the USB connection on the back of the console is not only can this control your DAW and control all of your audio input and output from your DAW, but this can be a great way of loading data onto the console, such as presets or uh, different scenes as well as update your firmware on the console. One last thing to note is that there is a USB connection on the top of the console on the top left, and you can use that for recording either a two or four track audio to that, or even playing it back as doing some, some music pre-service or pre your show. You can also load data via that into your scenes or presets. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope that you check out my blog at dbbaudio.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'm going to be posting a whole lot more videos on the Behringer Wing. Thank you so much.